This is me and my late grandma. She taught me how to read the Quran. But eventually, as I got older, my distance from the Quran kept getting further and further away. Every Ramadan, I promised myself that I'd continue my reading throughout the year. But as soon as Eid came, a few days later, my daily reading would be gone. Until I realized, what's with me 24-7? It was my phone! But I downloaded pretty much every single app related to the Quran. App after app after app. But most were outdated, unreliable and frustrating. Until I decided I'm going to make my own app. $60,000 for an app. What's the going rate for a kidney nowadays? After going through several companies, spending every single penny I had, we got a team from all over the world, bringing together a world-class team to make the best app possible. This is the first prototype. The app that was supposed to take 10 weeks quickly became seven months. Oh my days. Honestly, this is brilliant. Dude, this, this is awesome. The Kuali algorithm is smart. It adjusts itself based on your performance. If you read regularly, it increases your view. It the app tracks verses, pages and time spent reading and the verses to pages function takes you from reading a few verses a day to a few pages a day. This project is for the real enthusiasts. If there's enough of us out there, this will become the future of Quran apps. We'll spend the last seven months developing an app that removes obstacles, sends you unique reminders, tracks your reading and maximizes your connection. If there's enough of us out there, we can get this onto your phones before Ramadan. So please consider supporting us. Oh, and before I forget, sharing this video gets it even further and is free. So please consider sharing. Jazakallah khair. Welcome to Freshly Grounded, guys. This is the very final episode of Freshly Grounded before Ramadan kicks in. So I'm sure we're going to be speaking a whole bunch about Ramadan. And uh, we are joined by a doctor today. And uh, so that's the benefit in that is that we can probably just like bug him about a whole bunch of carry on last week's conversation about food and maybe on a more of a medical standpoint uh, today. But inevitably, as always, the episode is just going to end up probably just being a whole a lot of blab about something completely irrelevant. Uh, or less relevant, not irrelevant, it's still worth listening. Um, but we're joined by Dr. Mahfouj Ahmed. I said that right, didn't I? Yeah, bro. Assalamu alaikum. Right. Wa alaikum uh, Mahfouj, and we're going to um, uh, see him very shortly. Uh, but welcome to Freshly Grounded, episode 226, I think. Let's get into it. And welcome to a Freshly Grounded, the brand new podcast. Well, it's not exactly brand new anymore, is it? W welcome to Freshly Grounded, the podcast. That's better. Created by best friends, Faisal and Sam. Huh? I, welcome, I said welcome to Freshly Grounded. After that bit. Created by... After that bit. Best friends, Faisal and Sam. Really? Assalamu alaikum. Mahfouj, how are you doing, bro? Walaikum salam. Alhamdulillah, I'm good, bro. How are you? Yeah, alhamdulillah, man. Same old, bro. All good. It's been a year since yeah. we've had you on the podcast. And last time was virtual as well. So it's mm. a pleasure to have you in the studio. We did meet one time since our episode, which was when yeah. you very kindly um, came down and filmed the advert for the game. We shouldn't feature on too much. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't feature on too much. <laughs> oh, it was really funny. I, I actually had to send it because what we did for with advert is it was the first time us doing something like that where yeah. we had like loads of people on. And so we like dramatically overcasted. And so when we were doing the advert, we were like, I think it ended up being like 12 minutes and an advert meant to be like three minutes. So already we were like, it was like way over. And so this time with the Ramadan game, we, we did it a bit better and we actually like did it as like a three minute advert. But we realized that we had shot so many segments with so many people yeah. we, and we like some people aren't even going to probably like make the cut right and so i, I felt so guilty because people come down and they shot the other and so before i don't know if i sent one to you but i sent to like i think everybody came down yeah i got the message in, <laughs> yeah i texted everybody just saying like hey guys listen um i'm in the edit you right now just let you know like <laughs> You know, we're not going to use all the footage or something. It was just, it was just so much footage. So, and it's understandable. It's understandable. And to be honest, like, I wouldn't say it was the best. No, it was good. It was good. It was good. It was good. I remember coming in quite late as well. So, no. yeah. No, it was brilliant. The adverts are smashing it. And Thank the you, game man. is, mashallah, amazing as well. Yeah, it was, it was a pleasure yeah. having you, man. And um, I think last time we spoke, it was um, right at the beginning of... Last March, wasn't it? Yeah, it was right at the beginning of 
all of this, like the lockdown and stuff. Mm. And you had just recovered from COVID at the yeah. time. And at that time, that was probably like the first person I had spoken to who had had COVID because like I said, everything was so mm. new and it was an incredibly uh, scary, uh, like this like monster at that time. And it still is, it's still very, very scary. Um, but we, with anything else, I suppose like the more you hear and you familiarize mm. yourself with something, um, you start to understand a bit more and perhaps even like lower your guard a bit. Yeah. And so about, I think feel like maybe everybody's done that a bit or just become a bit more comfortable with the word COVID, like understanding it on a, on a bit yeah. of a deeper level. At the time, it was very, very scary. How are you now a year later? So that year has been kind of a roller coaster. I've kind of changed what I've been doing, working, like working different places. I think last time I spoke to you, I was in the acute hospital treating COVID patients. And if, to be honest, over the course of the year, remember in March when we were speaking about it, yeah. we didn't, like you said, you didn't know many people who had COVID. Uh, but year on, we know a lot of people who have passed away from COVID. Yeah. And it's like, it's been a kind of emotional roller coaster, And it's it's been immense, but it's been a blessing as well at the same time because we learned so much about ourselves. We learned so much about ourselves and like um, more about, like we learned a bit more about the NHS as well. Yeah. As in a lot of people just, know the NHS exists but I think we became more grateful for the NHS for grateful for the people there and it's been that we, could, we can talk about eight, like talk for ages about true how is it for you being a young doctor though because uh, you're you're uh, how how many years have you been like in hospitals because obviously you would have had education then after that even had like a year or so of um, being a new mm. under that category of thing. Yeah, so it's, it's been about four years now. Um, <laughs> that's uh, not since, that new, that's not that new now. Yeah. Uh, since th- I've completed three years now. This is my fourth year of becoming of being a doctor. Fine. And um, it's been like, I think as junior doctors, we've matured much faster because mm. the responsibility has been much greater. So having and the things we were dealing with, generally like seeing death on a daily basis like last time when i spoke to you it was in march just finished my job in the acute hospital and i moved over to a hospital where i was dealing with the kind of elderly population who have caught covid but they're not for further treatment so they're coming to this hospital now to ultimately it's they're most likely going to pass away wow. so i was seeing death on a daily basis as where, in, where is that that, you're that was in Brentwood in um, Essex. Fine. So it's like a Nightingale hospital ish, and it's like an emergency response. The army came in and they set the hospital oh. up. It went from being a 25 bed to kind of 400 bed. And you're it still was, there now? No, nah, I've had like my my time there ended because I started my GP training now. So I've gone back to training and kind of back into more formal set of rotations and things like that. I remember when we were speaking, you were saying that like ideally your your plan is to become a GP yeah. and stuff. So. How, how was Bangladesh? Because you seemed from from what I saw on your slave and doc Instagram account, which no longer exists. Have you yeah. like deleted it or like is it deactivated just, for now? But I don't know if I'll be coming back. I don't know about that. I think I feel like there was a scope. There was like an, a great audience for it, and you. Yeah. We do lack people who are confident in front of the camera and then have like such a resourceful skill, mm. um, combined with the fact that you are relating to our communities and even more so uh, the Bangladeshi community. Mm. Is that why Bangladeshi or yeah, Bang- Bang- Bengali? Bangladeshi. Bang- Bangladeshi. Yeah. Could you say Bengali? You can say Bengali, but that would into like that's India as well. Oh, okay. Because West West Bengal is Fine. specifically <laughs> Bangladeshi. Bang- not that specifically yeah. South South Asian community because I like to kind of reach out because even like to be honest in clinics and in hospital I'm speaking Urdu Hindi oh, everything really? so I I'm South I like to kind of reach out to the entire community not just specific to Bangladeshis fine so yeah. your, your slave and dog Instagram account did relate to so it was, it was, it, here's a guy who's a yeah. doctor he's young understands uh, mm. uh, kind of like a lot of the uh, stereotypes that um, uh, South Asians especially elderly South Asians might have yeah. uh, with uh, illnesses with disease with doctors with NHS and you're able to kind of translate that um, to that community really yeah. well uh, so I feel like there was there's room for it as I get I completely see what you're saying as in that's why I was on it for however long I was but then it's like you think about it you think about your purpose of being in social media I felt as though yes I was doing that but there's younger doctors coming through and they've they're doing what I was doing as well so I just felt as though it was the right time to kind of say okay alhamdulillah I've done my bit now it's time to kind of focus on myself and with social media, it's there's a there's a fine balance of kind of just making sure you don't get too. I was finding myself on social media like every day, mm-hmm. and I thought, you know what, I can't do that. I can't 
dedicate my life towards social media and I, I want to do the work and I will continue doing the work behind the scenes on a more kind of community level and go down the kind of mainstream routes of with working with the councils and government etc and um, you know sometimes also like you know when you do good work you want to keep it between you and Allah as well mm-hmm. at the same time so and I find myself every time I was doing this every time I was doing something good I was publicizing it to kind of encourage the youth and kind of get them to do more as well but at the same time, I just felt as though the secret between me and Allah was just, there wasn't any more secrets. And I want to build on that secret now. So it's like, I thought, go off social media. With the Slave and Doc kind of, you know, one of the reasons why I went on is because I read the book from Adam K. This is going to hurt. And the way he went about it was he used to share little snippets and stories of his time in hospital. So that was the kind of idea I had of my page itself. So... Most of my posts had little stories of little encounters I had with people, with patients, with colleagues. And then I kind of put a kind of Muslim spin to it, where at the end of it, was, I kind of had a few paragraphs on what I learned from it, from the kind of Dean perspective and the kind of the faith, imp- the impact it's had on my faith as well. So bringing that in. So inshallah, the plan is I'm going to continue writing, but in a few years time to release a book. So that's when I'll come back to kind of promote the book or whatnot. Uh, but for now, I just feel as though I want to build a few more secrets with Allah. Yeah, that's amazing, yeah. man. I remember someone here, in, I remember one of the shiuch saying that his sheikh, I think I've mentioned this story a few times, I've regarded, he said that his sheikh had a smartphone and um, and his, and he saw a picture, he saw a picture, like an indecent picture, right? And he got rid of the smartphone and got Nokia. And the sheikh said to his sheikh, he said, sheikh, you, there's so much benefit you could do with a smartphone. Don't just dash the smartphone. And um, and he said that that the harms that something can bring always out- outweigh the good that can be done with that thing. Mm. Um, and obviously, when I say you saw an indecent picture, it, it, you know, even if it's like you're you're scrolling and you get an ad showing up to you, mm. do you know what I mean? I'm uh, I'm sure like what we would think an indecent picture is for like someone on that level is probably like yeah. something that unfortunately we our eyes have become accustomed to. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's a very, very like noble uh, concept and and great to be, be able to remove yourself from social media, man. Uh, what what ha- so so when you went to Bangladesh? When did you go? How long did you go for? And why did you go? So I obviously I went to Bangladesh pre-COVID, um, and that was to kind of I went twice that year. In fact, no, no, no. Yeah. You, I thought you went recently no. for the the um, immunizations. No, no, no. The, the immunizations are here. In the- Vaccinating here, <laughs> bro. Bad quality footage. No, no. <laughs> no, I thought this conversation could be relevant though, because I don't just want to know about your holiday to Bangladesh last year. I'm not that. Um, I thought because on your slave and yeah. doc Instagram story, there was like footage of that was from two years ago. Oh, okay, two years ago. Fine. Yeah. Me thinking that people use social media to like post like things happening right now. No, no. So, as in, I didn't post it. This was the highlights. Uh, you probably saw some of my highlights. You might as well this cancel the episode now. <laughs> <laughs> Should I just go home? Fine. So I thought you went to. My understanding was that yeah. you went to Bangladesh to um, promote getting the vaccine because you were promoting. Getting the yeah. Vaccine. So I think what you saw me, the videos you saw, was me speaking in Bengali, right, and promoting it. So and you don't necessarily have to be in Bangladesh to speak Bengali. Exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> go 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 on track, fine. <laughs> so like the with the vaccination, um, as most people are aware, within our community, Muslim community, in fact, is. There was we're very apprehensive about taking it and we weren't taking it initially so the elderly community um were like no i'm not going to take the vaccine and yeah we had uh, national kind of adverts and things about the vaccine but it wasn't reaching t- reaching our community so at that point i thought you know what i'm gonna i'm working in the vaccination center i'm giving out vaccines i'm i'm not i'm yet to take mine so why don't i do mine and talk through it and talk in bengali so in, in not just bengali but in a dialect that no people speak at home so it's almost like this you, is you one. Went, did you go street? A proper street, as really? in like street Bengali, as in, but still keep it a bit polite. You get me? Uh, so, um, so I was just talking to people on the on a level and just saying it how it is, and um, not kind of sugarcoating and making myself look more kind of professional and bigger than I am. Just me as your your boy from the streets, as in from the community here to serve the communities. Quite simply put, so I did that in um, Silati, and um, to be honest. I didn't tell anyone about it and I just posted it on social media on my Instagram and then people started sharing it and it came to a point where my dad received it on his phone really? <laughs> through WhatsApp and he goes, when did you do this? 
And I was like, oh, so it worked. Ah, yeah. So it went through all like WhatsApp, all the aunties and uncles were spreading it. I think it reached um, North or something in Scotland. It went to Bangladesh as well. Wow. And it was like, it had a good reach and it had an impact because I, at the center I was working at and giving out vaccinations, there were people who came and they were just surprised to see me there because I don't tell people where I'm working. Sure. And they were like, oh, I came here because I saw your video. Oh, wow. And I was like, I did the complete loop. So from promotion to vaccinating, and then, you know, I thought, you know what, that was good. It worked well. And, and that video that you did was, wasn't backed by, like, it wasn't asked of you to do that video, right? No, no, no. I, 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 to be honest, what I find is, like, sometimes when you are asked to do things by an organization, there's a, like, there's a strict kind of template you have to follow. And for me, and you have to do it in a certain way or this. And for me, it's like, I genuinely just wanted to help. As in, I don't need no organization backing or funding or anything like that. This is me just coming out of my way helping my community and I think that helped get its reach as well at the same time because when someone says okay this is someone who hasn't got a logo at the top hand corner of this video and doesn't have doesn't say special thanks to whoever yeah, yeah. it's genuinely just someone making a video of the vaccination and just trying to reach out to people and I, yeah I just stuck to that so before we completely move the conversation over because I think I feel like every, we've spoken ad nauseum about vaccine and uh, about COVID already with like so many guests I, I do think it's worth talking about what we were speaking about off air which was this uh, blood clot <laughs> situation <laughs> now I'm putting you on the hot seat like, I did not come to you to speak to different but, but um I said to you I think we even just for 30 seconds worth reiterating the conversation we had off air I said um, do you feel worried now because of what's come out about, blood, uh, about the blood clots you and i have both had the vaccine mm. um you've had both shots i've just yeah. had the one um but I, I i suppose i was asking you because i had had the vaccine i'm thinking you know now this is coming about this mm. I inevitably surely something's going to come out later about pfizer maybe mm. if it's five years down to and so and that well that was my thinking and yeah. then I, I said to you what are your thoughts on it so so what are your thoughts on that the whole blood clot so situation with the blood clot situation my thoughts hasn't really changed because with any medication, I keep saying that, and I said it from the beginning, with any medication, any inter intervention that we as mankind make, there's going to be side effects, there's going to be risks. And you know, you mentioned something earlier about how when the harms outweigh the benefits, mm. you have to look at it. That's the same principle in medicine as well. As in whenever you kind of do an intervention, you think about the harms and benefits. And uh, that's why, you know, with AstraZeneca, they've kind of said, between, if you're younger than 29, then we're not going to give the vaccination. Anyone older than that, you will give that. Why? Because of the harms outweighing the benefits. So for the elderly population, it's more beneficial. For the younger, maybe you can risk it for now and do take a different vaccination later. With the clots itself, if you look at the kind of the amount of, the number of people that have had clots secondary to kind of the vaccination, which to be honest, even right now, they don't know exactly why it's happening. There isn't a huge number, as in you're more likely to kind of, I think there was this sat, uh, stat uh, where, to, for instance, a contraception pill. Um, a lot of people take it without even thinking twice, but that has more, a bigger risk of you getting a clot than the vaccination. Then you think about other things like even pregnancy. If, you're, if you get pregnant, the risk of you getting a clot is far greater than this vaccine um, as well. So, And with any medications, as mentioned before, like... Another medication that we take regularly is the is paracetamol. It's in every every household. We go traveling, we grab a few paracetamols and take it with us. But even paracetamol can affect your liver and it has side effects. So yes, it's in the news and the way it's been portrayed, it's like, oh my God, there's going to be clots. But the risk is very, very small still. And you actually been affected as a young person. Fair enough. I get that. You've been affected by COVID and kind of having detrimental effects are relatively low but it's it's a very small risk mm. yeah fair fair i suppose there's not much more conversation <laughs> to be had on that yeah no no it's, it's a very good point and then like i said it's just i suppose a reiteration of the conversation that we we're just having off air yeah. before we went uh, on let's transition bro cool. uh, you can like let your shoulders down and your hair right, right cool. now because <laughs> we can transition from, like we're going to transition from dr ahmed to just mahmoud now um uh let's transition smoothly by playing the ramadan fresh grounded game which uh, you had only just heard about oh, right. <laughs> before going on air, but now you have a copy. Where is oh, it? You'll open it. All right, then. All right. Let's just relax now. All right. I always close this game in the wrong in the wrong um, in the wrong side because it's not I de it's not apparently 
di- identically square, even though mm. it looks it, isn't it? Yeah, it looks. There's square. a side that's it's, it's meant, meant to close open. on and open on. Anyway, so guys, the, for those of you who haven't got it already, this is the Freshly Ghani Ramadan game. The or Ramadan, the, the Freshly Ghani the game Ramadan edition. Okay, you can't see. There you go, Ramadan edition, and um, it's a set of sixty conversation cards and challenges. If you haven't got it already, go to shop.freshlygani.com and have some deep conversations, you know, with your family, your friends, your loved ones, and so on. All right. Should we just split the deck in half and then go like that? Let's go. Okay. There you are. I'll go first. All right, finish the sentence. I love who I am when I am with. My parents. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Make me feel bad now. I said my <laughs> friends. <laughs> <laughs> I think with your parents, kind of, you appreciate their existence and the fact that you're here and you are who, who you are because of yeah. your parents, quite simply put. Yeah, I, I get you enjoy. I think with friends, you enjoy being who you are. Yeah. But you don't truly love who you are. Yeah. If with your parents, you love who you are. Because you wouldn't be here because if it wasn't for them. You look around, you see everything you've got. It is down to your parents. All the wealth and fame and all the... like, Even your deen, it comes from your parents. Because yeah. if, if your parents lead you astray, then you will go astray as well. And it's a different way back. It's a different route back. And sometimes you think even if they push you towards a different angle, there's benefit in that because of their action. You became who you are. You kind of... Even if they... Even if they pushed you away from the Dean, you found Dean later much stronger because you had your own route back. It still comes back down to your yeah, parents. Of course. That's why, you know, when you're with your parents, you could sit there and sometimes just not even say anything and look at them and say, think about it. If you think deeply about it, I am here because of you. Yeah. And that's why you that's why I feel as though I love myself most when I'm with my parents. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> can't, I can't answer that. That's a good very valid point. My turn, yeah? Yeah. All right. Describe that Ramadan feeling. I, 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 do you know what? I, I, let's go with another one because I, descri- I did that on the uh, advert. Yeah, I just realised. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that right. was the first card I answered. All right, let's change it up. All right. How can you keep the dunya in your hand rather than your heart? That's yeah, that's a good so question. I think subjective... Oh, there's obviously like very generic uh, answers and objective answers to that like that the people of knowledge will tell you and like how to best maneuver yeah. it but I think subjectively for me and where I'm at with my life right now um, holding the dunya in my uh, hand rather than my heart means to um, I think what would be great for me right now is to keep uh, you know the advice that you're given is keep your tongue moist with the remembrance of Allah mm. that would be great for me and I need to make sure I improve on that and I'm constantly am keeping the remembrance of Allah on my tongue because that would definitely naturally Cause me to constantly remember Allah And therefore anything that's happening In the dunya and especially right now The dunya t- is taking up so much of my uh, Headspace mm. Because we're working on um, Like now transitioning out of Covid So naturally you're focusing on Like trying to gear things up towards an event again Focusing mm. on the cards this that the other And so keeping the tongue Moist with the remembrance of Allah is a very easy way To almost subliminally uh, Remember Allah and I used to think that that meant just constantly being in a state of istighfar and stuff, mm. and it does, but there's a there's a way that you can do that without even actively reminding yourself to do it, and it's to get in the habit of remembering all of the different adhkar and the du'as. So, like for example, the du'a to enter the bathroom, mm. to leave the bathroom, to enter a place, to leave a place, to enter your car. Yeah. When you when all of those. When you remember or when you memorize all of those different du'as, you realize there's a du'a for everything. So naturally, with every single thing you do, the, the, your tongue is just going to constantly be moistened with the remembrance of Allah because you can't hardly get anything done without mentioning Allah in some yeah. way. And uh, like before we start in the podcast, the du'a for um, uh, uh, that uh, Musa alayhi salam uh, made to Allah, I think it was, it was, it was Musa alayhi salam yeah. when he went to Fir'aun. Yeah. Uh, for speaking or um or when someone asks you how you are alhamdulillah when you yeah. get in your car to go on a journey you're always doing something you know what i mean so remember it memorizing as much of those of i think would be really beneficial for definitely. me definitely that's a it's the same 
definitely. Yeah. Tell me one thing you discovered about yourself this year. So this year would be from last Ramadan to this Ramadan, this Islamic year. Oh no, it's not even an Islamic year, Ramadan, Ramadan, is it? It's Hajj to Hajj, isn't it? It's, yeah. So just this. <laughs> not strong. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, it's going to go back to medicine, isn't it? Uh, I guess so. <laughs> I think um, for me, I think over the last year, kind of there's two angles to this. Um, I kind of figured out what I want, who I want to be in 10 years time because of the last year that's gone by and how I want to get there and why I want to do it. I think I've learned all those three things in the space of a year, which underlays. That's why I said it's a bit of a blessing for me because like working with... The elderly, for instance, those who are passing away, you have some deep conversations with them. And you and these are real conversations because they know what's going to happen to them. And um, and that's that side. And then dealing with death and dealing with families um, who have just had the loved ones um, who passed away. And I just learned that it was through a conversation with a lady, actually, um, who at the end, like I told her, she, I brought her in, told her, unfortunately, um, your father has passed, your mother has passed away and prior to that kind of set up so she can come and see her mum and everything. And then she said this one phrase which got him, she goes, your mum will be proud of you. And that's coming from another mother, you kind of, it got me as in, I started, I got teared, I was tearing up at work and I was like, well that's kind of deep, like your mum just died. And the first thing you said to me was your mum will be proud of you. What made her say that, the way you broke the news to her? Yeah, it's not just the news is the kind of the way I managed the kind of whole situation because she was in the her mum was in the hospital for about a week prior to that she was coming in and out in and out and they weren't getting answers they weren't being spoken to properly and I just thought you know what I'm going to spend an hour of my day and I just sat there outside it was a green like we had a little green area I just sat on the floor sat made them of social distance obviously sat made them sit down and we just had a proper one hour conversation about how why she's in the position she's in and what's going to happen because sometimes we kind of try and hide away from what's going to happen in the future so i spoke i spoke about it this is most likely what's going to happen and this is what we're going to do to help you and then brought them in and her mum died with photos of the family on the chest with a daughter by her side with a sister by the window so all of that the kind of the extra effort that's why she said your mum would be proud of you and then she said, you should do what you're doing right now. You're good it's at amazing. it. So it's like that small conversation kind of made me think, hold on. I've had a good impact in someone's life, even though it's towards the kind of the end of their life. It's still the family there. And you kind of, it just, it's, you know, so when sometimes things fit and you get that contentment with your job, I got that. And I didn't get that up until then because I thought I was going to do minor surgery or this and that. Mm. When I got that contentment, I was like, you know what? This isn't work anymore. This is Ibadah as well. Because you're doing something that affects your heart and it affects in a good way. And the kind of remembrance of Allah, as you mentioned, as in even in that moment, you remembered Allah, as in you remembered that soul leaving. It's like, mm. I was thinking about it that a couple of months ago. It's like whenever I'm in a room and someone dies, the angel of death was in that room. Yeah. Do you get me? And he chose not to take my life. Because even though that person's unwell, it could easily be my life being taken. So every time you're in that room, it's a remembrance of Allah and it's a passage back to the faith. It seems like you're an incredibly empathetic person to, to go the extra mile for that, the, for, for, for that um, lady's daughter, especially considering in a job like yours, it becomes like the norm to, to see people come and go. Where do you think that empathy, that empathy that you have stems from? Um, Would you consider yourself an empathetic person? I try to be empathetic as 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 much as possible because I think that's that's what makes us human. Because I think nowadays a lot of doctors and a lot of, a lot of medical professionals they have lost the empathy mm. because of kind of the system in place and the pressures at work and this and that. And maybe you not feel even it, feeling like yeah, justly yeah. Renumer re remunerated. Yeah, right? yeah, it's just. Um, yeah, exactly that. And so okay. it's always good to kind of go back to kind of why, who you are. As you're, before you're a doctor, you're a human being. And it's like going back to the whole slave and doctor. For me, before I'm a doctor, I'm a slave. Mm. I'm a slave to Allah and that will always come first. So being empathetic is one of the things we are told to be. As in show good character, show empathy towards one another, 
show kindness and mm. kindness and empathy go hand in hand so yeah i try to be empathetic and be as sincere as possible if i'm with it as well because it's very easy to be kind of not really empathetic but show you empathetic but yeah yeah i i I, 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 I have some like really empathetic people around me like just at work and stuff mm. and it's amazing when you see empathy in action you see someone put others before themselves you see somebody actually put themselves in somebody else's shoes and then make decisions based off of that and you can see why it's such an amazing a great trait to have uh but it, it can be difficult to implement empathy can't it because naturally mm. you feel a bit selfish you think about how you would want to deal with the situation so that the outcome is best for yourself in the case yeah. of a doctor not giving that time to a patient could just be a case of them needing to wanting to get through as much as they can or not feeling that they have to exert like emotional effort and stuff like that perhaps mm. um but when empathy is exercised it's beautiful to watch and you always get such great results from being empathetic don't you exactly you get that kind of i did my job properly as in mm. i'm not i didn't just do my job i did it properly the way it's i want it to be done and it's like you know you mentioned um can you be empathetic to everyone you sometimes you do pick and choose or sometimes the thing is like with patients the way you have to see it it's every patient their interaction with a doctor is an individual experience mm. but you as a doctor you're having so many different experiences mm. from different people yeah but that patient doesn't know the conversation you had before with the other patient yeah do you get me so there will be days where i'm speaking to someone about their death and the following conversation is as in gp land um speaking to someone about their death and their frailty to second minute second that patient talking about their pregnancy yeah so it's complete two different ends of the spectrum the end of life and the beginning of life yeah but my the way you communicate with someone who is coming towards the end of life is very different to someone who has con- um new life to become a c- c- new life coming into the world and it's like just because like you had a very um kind of sad and experience with that person you can't bring that emotion to the next conversation you kind of deal with it package it move on next patient kind of it sounds a bit robotic sometimes mm. even with empathy and the way you show empathy because there's two d- different types of empathy here I do think though that the best like use case of empathy is when both parties are 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 trying to be as empathetic as each other because while you're right mm. the pa- patient at that point is going through something and yeah. it's the doctor's responsibility to be empathetic not necessarily the patient's responsibility yeah. to be empathetic towards the doctor but on a human to human level if we just accepted that everybody should be really empathetic then what an amazing uh, encounter if um the doctor was extremely empathetic towards a patient but the patient was equally empathetic towards the doctor and, th- and and kind of told themselves this doctor's probably been on a 12 hour shift yeah. and has had to hand deals with so many different people and so if this doctor seems short with me i'm going to empathize and say that they probably have to deal with a lot and i feel that a lot when i see those videos of like ha- you know have you seen those videos online when uh, people can capture a celebrity being really moody i always yeah. empathize with a the celebrity there not because i am one <laughs> but because you look at that person you think that person must constantly have people coming up to them yeah whereas for the person who's met the celebrity um that's the first time they've ever yeah. maybe seen a celebrity or seen that celebrity right like imagine being the rock bro yeah. anywhere he goes he's like the most famous person in the world anywhere he goes and he's humongous like yeah. six it's, foot it's hard five, to miss it's hard to miss yeah he must have to uh everyone must be stopping him right but for mm. for, for that person it's the first time they've ever met the rock right they're going to be gassed for him that might be the 100th pers- person today who's met him and so my empathy and sympathy goes to to hit to, to that celebrity in that mm. example because like they must have to constantly deal with that yeah. but um but like i said imagine if both because those videos are posted online mm. with the intention of saying what a horrible person yeah. that guy is but imagine if like i said both parties were like oh, it is lovely that he even stopped for a second to to let me take a yeah, picture exactly. let alone the fact that he's probably had to deal with it with so many people it's yeah. interesting that's yeah. that's mad as in like it's true as in we don't think we don't think about it the other way around as in like we when we see some we get gassed and yeah. to kind of step back and say okay hold on this person's been through whatever has been through and he may not react the way i want him to react and accept that i think it's the same with any profession or anything it's like even when you go to okay, say a shop to say curries and we ask for a um washing machine yeah. and that person's a bit snappy with us 
straight away thinking, oh my god, this poor customer service, this yeah. and that. Which it is. Which is, yeah. it is, it is. You, I mean, the prof- even with a celebrity, yeah, you've spoken to 100 people, but that's the life you chose. Yeah. And the day you wanted to be a celebrity, you became a celebrity, and that comes with the kind of whole um, job role. And same with customer service, you're there. Um, if someone, if you have a snap, if you so, if a customer was rude to you before, you can't be rude to the next oh, customer. Yeah. Customer service concerns, human. yeah, everyone's human. But yeah. if everyone had that empathy, then s- things would be slightly better. <laughs> yeah. Who's the most famous person you've met or like seen? The Rock. Really? Yeah. When? Well, I've sort of in passing, I saw him. I was go walking through, I think, Waterloo Bridge. That's so interesting because I just pulled <laughs> up as an example. <laughs> I know. Um, I saw him for the premiere of, I think it was the, was it the, what's that? Oh, he Jumanji, to Jumanji two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, they had the premiere there, and um, I was walking, just walking past the bridge, and I just saw him there. I was like, it's mad. Did you like? Did you saw him from afar? Yeah, from far. It's like way far from the bridge. He was just way. Just about. You can't miss him. He was wearing yeah. a pink suit, and he was like six no foot or something. And it's like, yeah. That's so good. When I was working at Apple um, in retail, I um, there was a guy who came on the bu- on and he was like testing out one of the computers, and um, everyone was like, "Oh, that's Jon Snow, that's Jon Snow, that's Jon Snow." And I don't watch um, yeah. Game of Thrones, so I didn't know who it was. He's really tall, and they're yeah. like, "Wow, he's taller in person." But um, I think that's the most famous person I've seen because apparently everyone was gassed, and I know Game of Thrones is humongous, I'm not yeah. oblivious to that. So um, yeah, Jon Snow was you know within a couple m- meters of me. Nice. I think if we're talking meters, <laughs> Beyonce. Oh really? It was uh, I was I would, when I was six, seventeen. I worked in Harrods. Oh, okay. So every grant, you know, when the summer sales come, yeah, yeah, yeah. they have celebrities coming in, and um, yeah, I just she. I was in the back. I didn't really see her. I think <laughs> um, uh, I don't yeah I don't think I could top that because <laughs> that's like she must have like tens of millions of yeah. followers, right? <laughs> Yeah, probably. I don't even know to be honest. She seems big. The um, you know when you go on tour with um, uh, when when we did the tour with Mufti Mek, I can't believe we're going in one conversation with Beyonce. <laughs> Beyonce, Beyonce it's absurd Mufti Mufti. that we're even having that conversation. But like, he he would not like his name being mentioned in the same sense. But um, the point is, is that he's like probably that most famous in the Islamic yeah. world, isn't he? Like, his, he the level of like people and eyes on him is just insane and. You see that there because you're traveling and you're seeing all of these people who, bro, forget celebrity like Beyonce, Jay Z. Yeah, like, yeah. They're just people who like you're a fan of that person. Yeah. Imagine meeting someone who you feel like that person has changed your life. That's how people interact That's with them because yeah. because they would have heard one lecture and even though guidance comes from Allah for them, the experience is that they've watched a lecture of his and it's changed their life. Yeah. And now imagine meeting that person. It's, it's mad. It's, it has a different effect in your heart yeah. as when you meet that person. Like Muf- going back to Muf- like Mufti Menk himself, as in I remember watching numerous lectures of his, and then um, he came down to Eden the Park in Gans Hill, mm. Valentine's Park, and that's my local. And he was leading Juma, and he was giving khutbah face to face, and then he had his books uh, signing yeah, yeah. area. So I think I hosted a, that one. Yeah, you, you were there. Oh, was I? <laughs> that was um, my event. <laughs> all right, all right, sorry. <laughs> Move to Minx event. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, nah, he was there, and I just remember just sitting there. And I didn't really, because it was a long queue, and I, I eat in it. And mm. I wanted, I just wanted, I and he was going signing books left, right, center, and I don't want to add to that. So I just, yeah. from four, I was just seeing, and every time you saw someone, it was a smile. Yeah. You're going back to celebrities. Yeah. I can, un- like, with, I've not seen one moody video of Mufti Mink yeah. with any interaction. It's true. And that's because of Dean, isn't it? Yeah, and Umbarik. So he's like, and, I'm yeah. and his character is immense and his smile, honestly, his smile is just like, Alhamdulillah. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. don't have to say anything, Sheikh. Yeah. That's all, That's your smile is enough. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so he has a different effect on you. Yeah, in person, he's, he, he, he's very good like that, man. Mm. Um, all right, go on, your turn. All right. Hmm. It's a gold card, bro. Oh, it's a challenge, is it's it? It's a challenge. Oh, we might as well ignore the challenges for now because it's nothing we can implement now. Well, do it, it later then, innit? Okay. Do an act of kindness later. Fine. Oh, is it do an act of kindness now? <laughs> right now. <laughs> That's an all right challenge. I can do an yeah. act of kindness yeah. now. Um, I could just... Uh, I could... Um, an act of kindness now. I could give you a smile. That's not. <laughs> That's not the kind of I think it's done, isn't it? Uh, I'll go question here because we spoke earlier a bit about Bangladesh. Um, 
Tell me one. You, tell me one beautiful thing about your culture. Yeah, there's loads of beautiful things about yeah. the English culture. Tell me one. I think it's the hospitality. Yeah. I think in our cultures, in you come in and it's even in Bangladesh. I think it was uh, voted at one point one of the happiest countries in the world. Oh, uh, you know what I recently saw, bro? I recently saw a stat that's like, um, why people in Bangladesh, it, it, I can't remember, man, but it was something really positive about Bangladesh and about how they um, transformed, like, they transformed, like, their economy or something by, like, they almost have, like, this mentality of, like, a group mentality of, like, you know, working together, cultivating things together, um, there was there's jobs and pl and 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 um, there's jobs for everyone. Mm. A lot of women work in Bangladesh, um, and it was being compared to another country. And I can't remember what country it was, but basically explaining that they really um, that Bangladesh has has really moved leaps and bounds. Yeah, and no, it's, it's been people. Years. We I think we celebrated fifty years of kind of being Bangladesh, and if you look at the kind of the growth, it's been immense. And is even the GDP is one of the highest in South Asia. And um, it's just going stronger and stronger, and it's huge leaps. Like, you go to Bangladesh, and you they call Bangladesh digital Bangladesh now, as in oh, everything really? is digital. Like, everyone's making apps, everyone's doing really? this. Like, I went to Bangladesh, and my phone signal was better than the UK. No. It's like one of them was they had 5G before we, my 5G came here. And um, this is making they're making huge strides, but obviously, all countries have issues and problems, and poverty still exists. And that's something that the government should kind of hopefully work on a bit more. But going back to the question, what I like about my culture, one thing I like is the I said hospitality because like you could go to any Bengali household, whatever race, culture, religion, and they will feed you, as in you will sit there and they will feed you, and then you know what they won't just feed you; they'll be like stay, stay overnight, oh. <laughs> so we can give you breakfast and just like they don't like like as Bangladeshi we don't let go of people, as in we want to spoil them, and you get that when you go to Bangladesh. If inshallah you go one day. Um, you'll see that as is it, it like that in your uh, household if somebody was to turn up at your house like my mate I think he came to the last uh, to, you know my uh, other medical doctor mate so he came to my house just by passing and uh, uh, the guy who came yeah, in yeah Bilal, Bilal Bilal yeah so he came to my house the other day and he was he's left for Australia by the way now Has he? <laughs> so he's gone to wow, Australia for good <laughs> but yeah so he came to my house before he left and, my, and there was like my dad, when I introduced him to my dad, and my dad's like, oh, he was looking at me. It was just a two-minute interaction. Within that two minutes, my dad managed to find the orange and give it to him. He's like, look, make sure you have this. Wow. As in, you don't like leaving people, like letting yeah. people go empty-handed or without eating. How come he's gone to Australia? Um, he's going to do his surgical pra uh, training there. Oh, so, of course, yeah. he's a surgeon. Yeah, so he wants to do it there. And yeah, he, he really enjoys the weather. You see his social media, he's always talking about weather. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, so he just moved his whole life there. He's gone by himself. Life, yeah, on, on his own. Literally, no family, no friends, no one there. He wow. just packed his bag and said, "You know what? I'm doing it." That's uh, that's that's, that's amazing. Like to see somebody have that level of like risk, uh, like be okay with risk like yeah. that. You know, Mashallah, he's doing well. I spoke to him a few days ago. He's well. He's enjoying himself. Have you seen? Um, oh, this is gonna sound like I'm. <laughs> that's so bad. So. I was going to ask you if you've seen Seaspiracy on Netflix. I've not seen it. Fine. I, I, I felt like it was going to sound like really racist because like we just spoke about Bangladesh and then the whole documentary about fish. <laughs> but it was because it's nothing to do with that. Right? It was because... I'm glad he reminded yeah, you of Seaspiracy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, you didn't even think that. So I didn't even have to bring any of that context up. I no. could have gotten over it. I could have just gotten Now that you've broken it yeah. down, bro. Um, I, it was, <laughs> <laughs> you were thinking of it. <laughs> yeah, it was because it was because I remember off air thinking, oh, I remember off air. Yeah. I said to you, I I said, did you? And then I said, oh no, I'll speak to you about it on air. Yeah. It was that. So I just came to mind. Oh, yeah. But um, I wanted to ask your opinion on because um, I was my one of my intentions was is to go into like Ramadan and like kind of like on a on a health level if we could. Uh, but I did really just cover a lot of that in last week's episode, mm. but. Between the two, I managed to catch some of uh, this documentary called Sea Spiracy on Netflix. And what it's about, bro, it's about the fish that's like in the world, basically, like all, all the different fish we eat and stuff, and how it's caught, and about how the salmon is all um, like full of uh, lice and stuff like that. Oh, so you have to watch. It. I mean, there's no need for a conversation here because you haven't seen it, but it's. There's it's lice absurd. and salmon. 
like the yeah it, you have to watch the documentary it's quite it makes mm. you kind of will not want to have any fish anymore but now i'm back to eating fish <laughs> i shouldn't say I, that I, I i suppose it comes down to where you get your fish from no bro no not yeah, even you should watch yeah man bro my it's, it talks about how all, all those labels like uh, they like these companies are like they do it, they give the labels for money so like how these companies give money the one you know those companies that say like we're like yeah. dolphin safe tuna and stuff mm. like that they say they get you can get that label apparently by like paying for that label and that's how they make their money the whole way like those companies make their money is by like having their label on other people's things so they need if that's documentary seen by the Bangladeshi community I can say yeah Bangladeshi yeah. <laughs> we're gonna break lose our culture <laughs> yeah. no, watch watch part watch, watch don't you don't have to watch all of it but because yeah. you can kind of get the gist of that documentary like without watching all of it yeah. but there's I mean, interesting bits in that in that doc well, I'll definitely give you a look as yeah. in if it's gonna put me off fish I don't know it, it doesn't for too long though it should it should put you off fish but I'll be honest in saying that I've, I'm eating fish again. That's all right. That's, then I'll go for I'll that night. Go. That night I didn't eat. And I was considering salmon. And I was like, I can't. After I seeing mean, the salmon. I'm licensed salmon. But then the next day I had, I think, some uh, cod. You kind of flopped it then. <laughs> so yeah. much for that. I feel guilty even saying that. I feel like a bad person saying that I'm eating it. fish. I think I need to see it too. After watching that doc, I, feel, I don't want to feel like I'm mocking the doc because it was a good documentary. Mm. And now I feel rude. I feel like I'm offending the person who wrote the documentary. <laughs> I need to see this documentary. But you know what? Like, if you think about most things, there's like ethical ways of doing it, non-ethical ways of doing it. I don't know. I've not watched the uh, documentary, so I don't but know. This whether is what that talks about. It's about this exact uh, thing. It's about it's saying about there's, it's, yeah. there's no ethical way of there fishing. There is no ethical yeah. way of fishing. It's not even about like the hell. It's not like the, the one of the documentaries that's, that's like, you know, like uh, What the Health, which is like yeah. really like, vegan friendly documentary it's all about mm. veganism and stuff this one's not that this doesn't talk about the health issues with eating fish it's simply about how fish is caught nowadays and about how it's impossible and about even if you were to try and do it ethically through like a fish farm even mm. how fish farms are unethical and, and and stuff like that and what if you just catch a fish from a river or something that's fine but, but that's that you can't do that at scale that's true uh, if you were to go out right now and you would do that for your dinner, fair enough. But that's that's what it made me think of because it made me think mm. of like the Sahaba and stuff like that. And back then, you know, f food was like that, wasn't it? Yeah, like you just you, catch it. You find yeah. and catch and, and, and buy and sell them, locally. Yeah, yeah. So there was none of this like, um, um, not capitalism, what is it called? Uh, it probably does fall into capitalism. Consumerism. Consumerism. Yeah. And like just creating... Um, mass product at demand yeah. how can we get it faster and uh, a cheaper yeah and I think also like our diet itself is changed so dramatically like we most of us have meat every day yeah that's not kind of that wasn't the norm meat yeah. was a luxury before yeah and um, I think slowly everyone's gonna go back to that yeah. I reckon yeah because because of documentaries like yeah, we are on that trend. Like, yeah we're on that trend like being eco-friendly mm -hmm. making sure we think about where the meat's coming from and there's um so i think slowly we're going to go back to it and that's a good thing because yeah. diet and health wise as well uh plant-based diet and then having kind of protein here and there is good for you well w one of the other cool things about the documentary was that it, it opens you up to understanding why it's important to be eco-friendly and i'm kind of speaking as a hypocrite here but i'll um but I am in that phase where I'm starting to try and make that change. Mm. I don't like go and like, you know, on a Saturday, take a whole bag of plastics and throw them in the River Thames. I'm not that <laughs> bad, but I, I probably can be more conscious. Right? Yeah. And um, I'm moving towards being more conscious because um, in this documentary, Actually, I'll tell you what started it first, and I'll tell you what yeah. they said in the documentary. But what started it first is I was at one time um, I was speaking to Sheikh uh, Tim, Sheikh Muhammad Tim Humble, mm. and he said that what what's amazing about being like eco friendly and not wanting to use too much plastics and stuff is that you realize is when you realize that it's not just about helping the other creation of Allah and helping mm. like fish. And, and 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 the creatures of the sea not consume plastic it's the fact that you're going to end up consuming that because w they open up fish and they find pieces of plastic and pieces of um other material perhaps metal and stuff in that mm. fish and then we're consuming that 
that point. And that's Probably, when, yeah. selfishly, I thought, oh, it's di- it is directly affecting me. Um, not not mm. using, uh, like not recycling or at least trying to maybe use like a reusable coffee cup and stuff. And like I said, I'm being a complete hypocrite here because I'm still not at the level that I should be. But yeah. it has made me think and it's made me make small changes. I was always like against like having to like, the inconvenience of carrying like you have there, uh, along with like, such a <laughs> pious brother, your own water bottle that is like completely re- like uh, can be used again it's, and again. It's out of convenience for work, and like, <laughs> it was a gift. And um, well, at work it's brilliant. So you just put it in your little pocket, and you. But you, sh- you should have ridden that wave and just said, "Yeah, I'm trying to help the." Em-. You are uh, helping the environment. I am helping the environment, but it's more like I said, selfish reasons more than environment. Well, well because of selfish reasons, I was like, like. Pro convenience, but yeah. I think this is one of those scenarios where you, sh- you shouldn't be pro convenience and you should mm. be pro life yeah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the world. And it's simply the fact that, like, it, it's a sh- it's a shame that it yeah. took for me to understand that um, it, it's gonna inevitably affect me. Yeah, <laughs> that made me start kind of thinking down yeah. down the way. But um, but yeah, like you, you, uh, in the documentary, it kind of brought it full circle because at the beginning of the doc, they mention uh, that like when they open up whales nowadays, like after they've died, and you look in the body of a whale, it's full of plastic. Yeah, it's plastic. Has and even though we don't yeah. necessarily eat whale, imagine like we do yeah, eat other, fish. Like other fish, like small, like on a smaller scale, they'll definitely have some plastic in them. But then like our fish, like yeah, in the UK, we're really good. We are trying to be better. Uh, with the recycling and everything but then you have to think about it on a global kind of element as in our fish isn't usually from the uk yeah that's true do you know what i'm saying yeah but yeah but, but obviously you're doing your bit yeah. so consciously you can walk around here saying alhamdulillah i'm doing my bit but reality wise it needs to be more of a global effort well you say that mafuj but think about it that it would have started with like a small group mm. being passionate about it and it led to McDonald's using yeah. paper straws. And that's a big move that's a because big move, yeah. McDonald's is like spread far and wide and yeah. they've gone, if, they, if they've gone from plastic to paper, it, you know, it would have made a big difference. Although yeah. I did hear something with one of these chains, they changed something from plastic to paper but then it still was not recyclable i can't remember anyway yeah, I, I really would love in all of these over 200 episodes of festival we've done i don't think i've ever had a conversation with somebody who could educate me yeah. properly on um this whole world of like um, that would be good the, in, i think i think yeah, i would love to have yeah. that i'd love to have somebody on who can educate my ignorance there, on 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 these things there, there was a group actually i don't know whether they still exist excuse my ignorance but there was this group called made Okay. And they were looking M-A-I-D. into M-A-D, M-A-D-E. Okay. And they were looking into ethical kind of recycling and this and that as from the Muslim perspective as really? well. Really? Yeah, it was really good. They were based in East London, I remember. I don't know whether they're still there. Maybe we, we can do, do some that, yeah. digging, yeah. Tap into them, yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, it'd be interesting to have that conversation because I do, I can appreciate, I have a lot of ignorance on a lot of things mm. and definitely um, like being more eco-friendly is one of the things that I'm yeah. quite ignorant on. And it's a bit too late now. Like it's catching, yeah. you know, there's times where it's like, it's too late to be ignorant now. Like you have to kind you of have to c- educate yourself because yeah. you are making impact on the world, especially then as you get older, you get married, you, become, mm. you have a family. The morals you teach your children, it, inevitably the next the generation, generations yeah, exactly, of exactly. changes. Yeah. I think everyone's a bit ignorant towards this and we just kind of like take it out and leave it. Yeah. Just, we, don't, we think about it for a moment, for a couple of days, a week. And then we go back to our old ways, unless you kind of actively want to bring change. Yeah, know? and also I think like um, when things are easy or if things mm. are made harder for you, um, there's that friction. Yeah. Because I think like my council is like one of the, must be one of the only councils in the whole of the UK. Because everywhere else That's I go, yeah, a statement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> what am I going to say next? No, but what my my council doesn't seem to be bothered with how many. Uh, black bin bags, so non recyclable bin bags, you you give right, and they and they kind of come and they come and collect them every week. Mm. Whereas everywhere else I've gone, and when I was living in Cardiff as well, when we were living in Cardiff, bro, they would collect black bin bags once every two weeks, and it was a maximum of like five, and we were living in a house of eight students, bro, and the rest had to be recyclable. So that forces oh, you yeah, does. to recycle, and it forces you, and it makes you realize how many things are recyclable, and they and they would only collect food in a food bin. 
uh, bag, not in a the normal black, black bag. bag. Yeah. So oh, if you had wow. food to dispose, you had to go in a food bin. Mm. Uh, general rubbish goes in a general rubbish bin, and recyclables go in a recycle bin. And they'd re- they'd collect recyclables every week, and they'd collect bin bags. And, and therefore, you had to right. You're forced that's into that's it, and that's mad. quite well. <laughs> How it, many years it, ago it was frustrating. This? Um, this is when I was in uni, like five years ago. But oh. um, but the council in in London. I think um, London's just where chilling. I live. They don't do oh, things like that. Even like in my borough, I think you could just, they just come and collect however they, many. But with us, the black bags need to be in the bin. <laughs> yeah, so. that's just. That's as in like, you know, no, no, no. You know, no, no. As in like, <laughs> as in the number of uh, black bags you can have is limited to how oh, many fit okay, in the bin. Do you get what I'm trying to say? <laughs> 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 Obviously, <laughs> but like you know the like you can only I think you, I think it's about four or five or something max. Anything uh, outside of the bin they won't take. So different council different different things, but I think mm. yeah, we need you to be could a you, more Could you buy another bin and put that in? There? Put I it. Think so. You could, couldn't I you? I think yeah. Yeah. So there's no limit then. Exactly. Yeah. You could just buy another wheelie bin. Yeah. I think you can do that. I think you can buy more bins. Yeah. This defeats the purpose, doesn't it? As in, kind like, of. I mean, it's a, it's nice because you are not micromanaged. Yeah. Um. But can you imagine the uproar if that happened in London? I think they implemented in so many other places, bro. That. Uh, even though I would be uncomfortable with that change yeah. because I like the convenience of taking the bins out and stuff. Yeah. I think it, I can, I wouldn't be mad if they implemented it because it seemed, if so many more people would recycle more. Mm. Uh, I, it doesn't even sound like me speaking about recycling because <laughs> I never, everyone who listens to the podcast listens to me, like, what are you talking about? But I, I can see, I'm starting to really understand and see the benefits in that stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Those changes, they, I, one, one other thing that I want to do is, um, I, I had a, I was given a, a metal flask from uh, Nespresso when I bought my Nespresso machine. Mm. And so I was using that quite a bit and that was quite handy. But I've, that, my son broke that. And so now I don't have a coffee flask, but maybe I should invest in a nice coffee flask and take that. Do uh, Right now with COVID restrictions, are they taking your own flask and filling it up? Probably not. Um, They are. So if you go to yeah. a coffee spot right now, can no, you give them... Like, to be honest, the, the coffee spots I go to in hospice is an hospital. <laughs> so it's a bit different there. Um, no, do they? Do you give they, them your own flask? You can give your flask, yeah. And it's, is it's, that what you've been doing? Yeah, you can, I've not been doing it. I don't usually... I usually just buy the coffee. <laughs> I need to be more conscious. <laughs> oh. No, I um, <laughs> no but but I'm wondering I, uh, if because obviously yeah. normally when things go back to normal yeah. you'll be able to give able your, to give your but yeah. I imagine that right now they don't want to be touching other people's yeah, stuff yeah but if they're wearing gloves because the practice should be every time they kind of interact with a customer they change the gloves okay so they should be doing that if they're not then I think there's bigger problems yeah, <laughs> yeah. and not the flask <laughs> they might get fired yeah <laughs> maybe I'll do that maybe I'll invest in a somebody bought me one actually as a Eid gift once, my cousin bought me a uh, coffee, f- a reusable coffee flask. And I think that they were trying to get me to be more active on that. And they knew that I drink a lot of coffee. And I'll be honest, I don't think I used it for that. I, I don't think I used it. And it's a really nice one, actually. Oh, I'm such a horrible person. You just forgot. I'm going to buy a nice one. I'm going to buy one that is yeah, nice. Just, it's That's big, re- it's your, your one is really nice. It's, just it's show it to nice. the cat. Show it to the cat. Yeah. Oh, there it is. It's like matte black. Yeah, matte black. What brand is that? It's Typo. Oh, I've, like, as in the shop. Yeah. And it, can it take? Can it accept hot and cold drinks? Yeah. And it keeps it cold or hot. Yeah. It's really good. As in, it's nice and convenient. Nice and small size as well. <laughs> Sell it to me. <laughs> <laughs> looks good. Looks yeah. the part. Um, I've used it for a day. <laughs> oh, is this the first day you're using yeah. it? No. <laughs> this is the first day I'm using it, and it's uh, really convenient. It looks nice. It looks sleek. It looks nice. It looks slick. Yeah. I'm gonna look at it right now. Yeah. I'm I'm on the Typo website. Thirty percent off my next order because I'm a first time buyer. Oh, they were really cool stuff. Yeah, oh, they really got weird stuff. Yeah. They've they got, got mini this, vending machines. Yeah. <laughs> They've got another one. Water dispenser. You put in your desk, which is pretty cool. Oh really? Yeah. Oh yeah, I can see that now. Uh, are these oh so they just sell things that are like a fad basically. Yeah. I, uh, let me have a quick search. So, uh, what is it called? A water <laughs> bottle? Water bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing fancy, but yeah. <laughs> they've got nice designs. And there's, there's so many different other water bottles. Did you get it online? I got it as a gift. But it's, I suppose it's online. Got delivered to my house. Mm, maybe you just got an exclusive there. No, it should be there. Oh, uh, maybe mini metal drink. It's yeah. not metal. Is it metal? Yeah. 
Oh no, this one's different. The oh, but they got a, they got a discount on the mini metal bottle drink, which looks nice, which is only three pound fifty. What? Absolute. But okay, your one's here. Fifteen pounds. Who gifted this to you? Was it Mark Zuckerberg? He's <laughs> a very thoughtful person. That's all wow. I can say. <laughs> you owe that person. Big time. Big time. <laughs> Big time. They spent 50. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. Your one looks at 350 mil, actually. Yeah. 12 pounds. So mm. This is a thought. Yeah, I guess it's just a thought. Well, there's a massive version of it, which is one litre, 25 pounds. Yeah, but you're not going to carry a one litre bottle around. That's just... That's true. That size that you have there yeah, is... It's can you just check out the bottom what size that is? I think it's three... Uh, is it at the bottom? It's 350 mil. Yeah, so that's 12 pounds. I'm going to... Yeah. Do you mind? Some people are offended by people buying the same thing as them. Why would I be... I like don't know. It's <laughs> right. Bro, buy it. It's convenient. I'm not going to get it this second because it's not good. But okay, 500. That's a 500 mil. 500, 500 mil looks a bit big, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, you could leave in your bag 500 mils, but... 350. 350. You can, fit a, you can fit a... Could you fit like a medium... Costa cappuccino yeah, in that? Yeah, it's like, it's just, yeah, easily. I think easily. Yeah, it looks like you could. 350 is good size. Well, I'll get it later because yeah. right now we're on a podcast. <laughs> yeah, kind of, yeah, went off on a tangent there. <laughs> yeah, it's quite nice actually. It's very, it looks very appealing. I yeah. saw it, I noticed it as soon as you walked in. You know what, you could have your freshly grounded kind of. Oh, maybe we should actually get some freshly grounded uh, flasks. Well, yeah. But the reason we haven't is because they're like really... It's like getting putting your logo on a t-shirt, yeah. isn't it? It's like one does it, but maybe we can get a really nice matte black one yeah. design made. Yeah, and then you could promote it to people watching, and hopefully they can be a bit more conscious about the economy. Do Sorry, you know that uh, kind of eco and think about. I might do that. Yeah. Might start making yeah. those. All right, I'm going to ask you a question <laughs> now. We're coming towards the end of the podcast. I feel like I had so much I want to talk to you about. I can't remember any of it. All right. Yeah, let me let me let me cherry pick one. Oh, this one was a good one. Actually, I've done this. I, I chose this for a reason. What was your favorite childhood snack? And we all know you're a few years older than me, so perhaps it's uh, <laughs> something that I wouldn't have heard of. So maybe nah, explain it to me. How many years older? Yeah. <laughs> Year or two? <laughs> <laughs> two years. Um, I would say Panda Pops, man. Oh, the drink. Yeah. Do you remember? I that? never, I never used, no. I never had them. Why? I didn't like the design of the bottle. Bro, it's like small and it's like proper sugary and it's yeah, colorful. It just looks, pots, yeah. That was nice. As in, then they stopped making it because of the sugar tax and whatnot. I really? don't know why they stopped. To be honest, I remember going to school with a Panda Pops, and break time they giving us. They used to give us donuts, um, chocolate coated donuts, or a slice of pizza we can buy. This was pre Jamie Oliver days. Wow. <laughs> that was the life. That was the lunchtime sort. Uh, the break time, not even lunchtime, bro. <laughs> you know when we were in high school, Jamie Oliver's dad came to our school and like just annihilated us and talked to us about healthy meals and stuff. Mm. Yeah, we we kind of. He, he, I suppose I get why he did it, healthy eating and that, but a lot of children <laughs> enjoy having pizza having for lunch. Pizza yeah. for, well, not for lunch, for yeah. break time. Oh, well, yeah, we used to have pizza break yeah, time as well. Yeah. It would be a pound of slice. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, with that and a donut, bro. That chocolate donut was, oh, we never was fresh. That. It was fresh. Bro, I'm going to ask you another one. Let me ask you. Wait. Uh, <laughs> okay, go on, you go and then I'll go. All right, let me go. Oh, okay, we did this one. What's your favorite responsibility? Uh, my favorite responsibility, last, I'll answer newly because the last time I answered it, I said uh, being a dad. I, I thought you said yeah. that. Yeah, so uh, this time I'll say um, being uh, running freshly grounded. Because mm. now that it's big, a bit bigger and it's got a team and stuff, it's, it's a really fun responsibility to be able to provide. Like, should I tell you something that's really fun? Oh, it sounds like I'm so arrogant. What's really fun, yeah, is like doing stuff like, oh, guys, Ramadan's coming up. Um, of, uh, let's try and do as much as we can before Ramadan so that you so we can have as much time off in Ramadan, mm. right? Um, and that's always been my goal with Freshly Grounded is to hopefully have an even mm. bigger team and have stuff like that, like real leniency around Ramadan because yeah. I am I know what it's like, right? Like you don't want to be working in Ramadan. Yeah. But saying that, it's such a... It feels so lovely to say because you know that's really going to impact somebody. Mm. Like... Um, like knowing that you haven't got pressure of work as well during Ramadan. I'm not saying that guys take the month off. I'm saying like um, in Ramadan, manage your own time. As long as tasks are done, let's yeah. and even then, a lot of things with especially going the fact that we're digital can be um, scheduled ahead. Our entire um, 
a social all of our socials could technically be scheduled a month in advance and none of us have to touch we could the, the, mm. the, anyone who's run doing anything on socials could take the entire month off if they wanted to as long yeah. as things are out right but it feels really nice as a responsibility to say don't worry about the f i know that things are going to be tougher in ramadan yeah. so um manage no, your own no, time I and get that, that feels nice it's like you've got the opportunity as someone who's leading a team to kind of get Hassanat as well at the same time, as in you with that intention, as in you know what, I'm gonna make it easy for my team for Ramadan. It feels nice to make it's people nice happy. The yeah. fact that you can do that, that's a, that's what responsibility is, isn't it? Yeah. Because yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it does. Be nice. and, and, and to be honest, they earn it because like a lot of uh, a lot of times, like people work like over and ab above. Mm, yeah. And I really don't like that. And I say like stick time and stuff, but naturally like. People work late sometimes yeah. and stuff, and so it's it's earned as well. But yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Sick. One of Allah's names is the provider. What are you thankful for that money can't buy? And you can't say parents. No, I won't say parents. I won't say parents. That's a cliche answer now. Um, I would say... Health. Yeah. Health is a big one, especially considering the year we've had. Yeah. Health and the ability to be able to sit here and just speak and not have any medical conditions to worry about or worry about this appointment or this issue I've got and have that tension because a lot of people live their lives by in the back of their mind they're thinking about that appointment that's coming up in two months' time mm. where they're having this diagnostic test mm. where it's going to rule out whether they've got this condition or it's a bigger condition. And things like that, little things like that, we kind of take for granted. And yeah, so health is a big thing because without good health, you're kind of limited. Mm -hmm. You can't, you could be young, but not have good health. Yeah. So with health, you're able to be more proactive, do more things for your deen, for yourself, for your akhira. So I think health is a big one. Yeah, it, yeah. it's one of those things mentioned in that hadith, isn't it? About like, what is it, five before five? Yeah. Like appreciating um, health before ill health. Yeah. Yeah, youth before old, old age. Old age. Wealth. Well, was it wealth? Was yeah. wealth one? I think wealth was one as well, yeah. That was really bad. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember what I mean. That's yeah, really I can't remember just going on. Yeah. But no, yeah, it's definitely something that health is a big thing. Yeah, you definitely. have to kind of. Like, you know, uh, the story of, uh, I think it was Zachariah, alayhi salam, and how Allah took away his health and he became really unwell. He was the one, and he took away his wealth as well. He took away his children. And then slowly he got it back when it took over repentance and making dua and everything. And yeah, so it's, a true t it's a true yeah. test is when you have something and whether you're grateful for it. Yeah. It's very easy to ask for something when you don't have it. Yeah. But it's about remembering those times when you, um, when you do have it. I remember this is one spe specific thing. I won't, I'll tell you off air what it is. Um, which is quite personal to me. It's like this. I remember when I was like really starting out in trying to build a career. And so I had left my job. And I was trying to build a business and everything was very like tight. And there was one specific thing I would do that would make, um, that I, that, that would like, it's always it's gonna sound so wrong though. It wasn't anything criminal or anything, but like because now I'm like it's one thing I do like make things a bit easier. But um, drugs. <laughs> no, yeah. There was just it was it, it was a habit that I formed, which was a great habit, oh. that a person who is conscious of their finances mm. would make right, like would have that habit. And I, I I tried my best to tell myself when I am out of this situation, when things are going a bit better. To, to keep this habit yeah. because that's it's such a small habit and something that if you have a bit of comfort financially just a small bit of comfort financially, you wouldn't worry about those little things but worrying about that little thing would if i do worry about the little thing even when i have a, um like comfort then i it would always remind me of the times when i didn't have that comfort and it would make me appreciate it so um it's even reminds me to remember that uh but uh yeah you're right it's about being thankful when you have it i guess because yeah. we're definitely great i think we think about our health when we don't have it. And mm. when you're unwell, you're making oh, dua like, like big time. Like, Allah make me better. Bro, for me the shifa. last year, I've yeah. had like this eczema situation, bro. Yeah. Right? It's like, like all of my arms yeah. and stuff. And 
there's been like so many dermatologist appointments there's been so many specialists and, and yeah. they all say the same thing because inevitably it is the same answer right but in, but even being conscious of my hands and stuff now it, I genuinely just that in itself it makes me so grateful for when I didn't have to worry about those things yeah. even though it's just a small thing it's just small eczema. thing yeah but it's yeah. still there isn't it and you yeah. think about it yeah listen Mahfouz thank yep. you so much bro for um coming down uh, i know that it's a bit of a, it was a bit of a drive for you so i really so, appreciate bro. that thank you for giving us your time and uh, i hope you enjoyed it man it was a nice relaxed episode i, I yeah. always 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 prefer the episodes when somebody's come on fresh guide a second time because the first time it's like you don't really know each other yeah. it's like, like you don't you're trying to figure I out the and, first time was from uh, my bedroom i was in my yeah, bedroom yeah, you were yeah. in your office and I was at home, different. I think, as well. Yeah, at home, yeah. was at home as well. So it was a bit different. Both yeah. were in almost like a comfort space. And yeah. even though the interaction was like the first time, I think that was the first time we ever spoke as well. Yeah, yeah. Literally. And yeah, just, yeah I enjoyed it being here. I appreciate it. Yeah. And we didn't even get a chance to really speak much about no. Al Ishara. Uh, but before we do yeah. go, it'd be lovely to hear what are the plans for Al Ishara for Ramadan. So the plans for Al Ishara in last year, it was more of a kind of save us kind of plea. This time around, it's. Our Quran project has launched and we're translating the Quran and we've done the uh, 30th Jews now and we're kind of racing ahead of when time. When you say translating it, so for those, to, those yeah, who haven't so, heard of Al-Ishara, maybe so, you've given So Al-Ishara, yeah, yeah, we're an organization who pr provide, uh, make Islam accessible for the deaf, quite, sim deaf, quite simply put. And um, we have a range of services. So if you've been to Islam the Masjid, you would have seen every Friday there's sign language on the screen and that's Alishara doing it. So that's one of our services. We have um, Alishara's um, Deaf Children's Islamic School as well, which was one of the key um, services. We Where provide. is that Islamic school? I so didn't realize got, you guys had a Deaf yeah, Children's so Islamic So we've school. got um, one in uh, Whitechapel, Tower Hamlets, one in Redbridge, one in Luton, and we're looking to expand to nationally now. So that's the next phase now. So we're wow. gonna have, we're gonna go national, we'll go spread out to West London, South London, etc. So in that school, is it primary years? Um, it's up until the age of 16, from what I understand. And they're taught in sign language. They're taught, taught in sign language and we're teaching them about Islam. So there's different levels as well. So once you kind of reach level three, it's kind of you've reached the kind of next stage, which is the teenage years. So we're trying to create a syllabus for them. That's amazing. Yeah, so inshallah, that's that's the, the other service. And so one of the pioneering things we've done was um, launch the British Sign Language Quran. So if we thought about it, and it's like this was an idea we had about 10 years ago. But it's only last two years we kind of went ahead and started doing it. So now we've translated uh, the 30th Juz and um, inshallah going forward we could translate the entire Quran. And that's not the first time and inshallah the last time needed um, a BSL Quran is needed. So that's what's going to be happening. And how can inshallah. people support that? People can support that by going on, um, going to our website, donating. Obviously this is all through like it's a community thing. Um, every like be, Imagine the kind of once you kind of donate towards uh, the okay. BSL Quran. Another one might never need to be needed. There like shouldn't be needed. Yeah. And think about this is like this Quran, translation of the Quran is going to be there until the end of times. And that's that, that's immense, Sadhguru yeah, Jariya. Yeah, that's amazing. That's man. like, so be part of it before it's too late because once it's done, it's done. So go on the website and alishara.com. That's such a good point. Yeah. So that's one of the things that, as in, there have been people who have come forward and said, let me donate like pay for the entire project wow and we're like no because this is something that everyone wants to be part of yeah because alishara one thing we kind of stress is that we're a family charity and everyone who joins alishara like the deaf community or the hearing community or the volunteers and everyone we're a family and, and how is alishara doing now because last year they were in a bit of a tough spot when yeah. COVID happened. It kind of like put a lot of operation at, 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 to a halt, and yeah. there was a risk of Alishara closing yeah. down. I think that's why originally uh, that's why we touch, saw, right? yeah we spoke there. Yeah. Um, so how's it doing now? A year uh, year on. Alhamdulillah, like you know, last year we we're in a very different situation to now. We're much stronger because we've changed a lot of things. The way we go about kind of our fundraising side and things like that. We've we've kind of looked into different areas, and Alhamdulillah. From the mercy of Allah, we've kind of done very well from that front. So we're not no longer in the kind of save us scenario. More of us now, we're able. We've got that kind of back into now. Think, okay, how can we serve the community better sure. and go national? And inshallah, f five years, ten years down the line, go international because sure. the need is there. Sure, yeah, it's amazing work, man. And jazakallah khair for all that you do for that. Um, it's a charity that's always touched me since I heard about it. And um, uh, anything that we could do to support, man. Um, thanks so much, bro. 
next uh, oh, if you, in a couple of days time it's Ramadan inshallah and then inshallah. Uh, that's it we're going to be in the in, in the holy Ramadan. month may Allah allow us to make it I mean, and uh, inshallah we'll catch up stay in touch bro definitely we bro. don't we don't definitely. stay in touch enough we don't we yeah don't, but it's like you, you have my like, number uh, you have my number <laughs> yeah i have yours as well yeah. <laughs> well hopefully we'll fly back in yeah. a more timely way because yeah, that's exactly. one of the biggest issues we won't I have know, <laughs> i know i know <laughs> i've message. actually turned off my whatsapp notifications recently as well so, so that's why i didn't even see your message you know yeah. your message that you sent me saying yeah. that you can't that you're going to be running a bit late I rang you after that, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. So, you so must I have assumed that's why you I was saw my message. Yeah. I was like, I was like, Alhamdulillah, bro, that's yeah. but that's brilliant. And I was like, then I saw him, and I'm like, hold on. <laughs> yeah, I was, <laughs> I was like, cool with it. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, man. Alhamdulillah. All right, guys, thank you so much for uh, watching this episode of Freshly Grounded, and we'll see you next week, inshallah, uh, for a very special episode. Uh, and we've got some really, really cool special uh, episodes uh, coming up over the next few weeks uh, during the months of Ramadan. Of course, they're going to be more Ramadan focused, uh, and we've got some. Uh, special guest next week I'll let you guys know on a little secret next week's episode inshallah will be with Ustad Yahya Rabi and a very special guest host I'm sure you guys know exactly who I'm talking about comment below if you think you know who that is and we'll see you there next week Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh